to another episode of Trove. So uh, today's gonna be uh, something new and different. How about that? Um, there is a patch. It's a little tiny little patch. It's called the Post Pirate Edition, and it's basically uh, a bunch of bug fixes. And it is chaos chest have been randomized, and the club size has been increased. But that's not what this video is going to be about. It's a very, very small patch. You can read the patch notes on the forums. They did say that post this giant sh fish and ships patch, they will be putting out some smaller patches uh, compared to that one for a while. And while they also work on some test server stuff. Hopefully, I think that's in response to how buggy and crashy the initial uh, the initial launch of the fish and ships patch was. I think they're just trying to put up a little test server for some more in-depth testing before launching patches. Probably a smart idea. And so... Uh, oh, Agent Double Zero. So, yeah, um, today's video, though, is going to be the first of a series of videos that I'm not sure how frequently I'm going to make them, but it is going to be a resource guide, and I get this question a lot, and I know a lot of people in Trove ask this question, too. What is Glim? And Glim is the things that I'm gathering right now. You can see my inventory on the rear over there on the right added one glim and a lot of people have made resource guides on how to farm it how to get it but I just want kind of a comprehensive overview of the resource so let's just jump right into that uh, and we'll start by talking about um, glim as a resource it's, it's this particular yellowish trading material ex exchange for items from the pirates of treasure isles is the tooltip. It's like a yellowish seed kind of looking thing. Uh, it was originally in the alpha days referred to as warp seed and it was sort of a reddish item and was then replaced later to an updated glim item. And as stated in the tooltip, it is the primary trading resource and also one of the cheapest and simplest to obtain crafting items. So quite a number of trove recipes depend upon glim for crafting. Uh, we have this one pirate here which seems to have gotten a little bit of an updated look. Saltwater Sam! Oh, he's got a name now. Great. All of these recipes require Glim. Um, if we go ahead and find a... Uh, let's go to the crafting thing here. These will probably require Glim, some of them. Yes, the, ma the Mag Rider Mag Racer does. Uh, origin portals do and those are just a few of the crafting recipes in the game obviously there are a lot more I wonder if I can find someone else's crafting station and take a peek is that a creeper? it is a creeper that's cool uh, let's go here and borrow a crafting bench just to take a peek at some of the Things that might require glim. I think the portals are require glim. Yep, they all require glim. 300 glim, 700 glim, you know, quite a few. The mounts, I think some of the mounts, uh, maybe not. Uh, well, glim is a common resource. Here's another thing. Club, club card for creating a club requires glim. Anyways, so... Um, how, how do you get Glim, and, well, let me, let me, yeah. Right, so there's lots of different ways to get Glim, and a great, this is a great time to make this video because of the recent release of Fishing. So, um, the first way to get Glim that you saw a second ago is any particular world out there, you would just trample the grass with a mount. Every player should start with a mount these days. Um, and some of them are faster than others, but it all it takes is any old mount. You could also alternatively do it with a mag rider, but you would be going really slow. You could also uh, shoot them with your primary or oops, 
or laser the grass, but any of these tall grass props that are easily trampled like this will produce glim when you break them. And that goes for all biomes. So my recommendation if you're going to choose this technique, which I will lovingly refer to as the lawnmower technique, which is not the best method to get glim, if you ask me, but it might be the only one available to you if you're just starting out, uh, would be to head over to a hey, Afrogamer. Afrogamer wants to be in on the club. Let me do that before I forget. Um, Afro Gamer. Sweet, finally. It's been a while. I've been on the list for quite a while. I'll have to make sure to mark that on the spreadsheet. Um, so, uh, head to this first world. I don't care what level you are, but the reason for that is that you also get Glim for killing the mobs around the world. Uh, and. Um, let's see. But I could finally be in the club. Hey, yeah, it's good to see. So let's just find some some little creeps here, some mobs like this guy. We'll see if he drops glim. But since we're since he's level one, any glim? No glim. But that only took two hits, and I'm a, not a very high level thing. So if you got one of your higher level characters some fast movement speed or maybe you know this first world would be real simple oh there's some glim see drops glim i don't want to pick that up um so that's basically so just just run around all the biomes and trample the grass now your best bet is going to be the fey uh tricksters biome the fey wilds uh, and the way you know that is it's a, it's a dark green, but that just has the highest density of grass and also other plants that are trampleable. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for uh, when you're doing this lawnmower technique, so to speak. Uh, and so what else? Um, okay, next thing is gardening, and this is kind of perfect that we spawned here because I will get these gardening things, thingaroos right here. And uh, the way this works is quite simple. It's very similar to the lawnmower technique. And this is one that I would recommend doing if you're just starting out because you also will level up your gardening. And if you level up your gardening, you'll get some more mastery points, and that's always a good thing. So it's kind of like two birds with one stone. But, you know, after you get a certain point in gardening, it's probably not worth it to continue doing this. But um, I know my gardening isn't maxed up yet. That's kind of on my to-do list. And let's see, so we're just getting these sunlight bulbs, which you will find in all the peaceful biomes of an adventure world. And they drop these sunlight bulbs, which can also be trampled. Um, let's see, is there a way in that head? There's not a way in the head. So let's go to the club world now. And we will head to my tower. Where is it? Generate in. I'm having some server troubles today with Trove. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. That's why. Uh, I just my game just crashed, so hopefully it won't happen in the middle of recording this. Anyway, so you can basically uh, you can basically get Glim through gardening in the same way because uh, the basic grasses will drop Glim. So if you do need to level up your gardening feel free to make yourself a gardening workbench, which I can't find right now. Oh. And these initial grass seeds and fall grass crop and that kind of a thing. Um, these would be your best bet because they only cost sunlight bulbs to make, so it's going to be better for you uh, overall because uh, it'll be relatively cheap. You know, you don't have to, as as opposed to, like, for me, if I was going to advance my gardening, I'd be down here, I'd be spending fairy dust and sunlight bulbs and fertilizer and all this other stuff. So just use, just use these initial grass zones, grow them, trample them, repeat. Uh, and, okay, so, uh, oh, actually, you can't trample them, now that I think about it, because you're in a club world, and it, grass doesn't trample in a club world, so just laser them. Because you can, you can laser, laser it, or yeah. Um, 
Okay, so that's another way to get Glim. And as I mentioned, killing monsters is another way to get Glim, but that's not the best way. The best way is going to be the new way, uh, which is an amazing way to get Glim, so much so that I'm not even sure if it's going to stay in the game for that much longer, so get it while it's hot. I'm going to switch to my highest level character just because I'm wondering if that affects... Okay, my magic find is 69. <laughs> switch to this. Magic find is 50. Yeah, it does affect it. So, I'm not sure which class of mine has the highest magic find, but I would guess that it would be my Candy Barbarian. I mean, we could, we could, we could look at it just because I would like to be sure because I'm trying to get rare fish here. So, it is indeed, as I just kind of gave away, fishing. Oh, it's the Candy Barbarian. Uh, and the the fishing that you see going on here is uh, the best way to get Glim, and that sounds strange, but here is the deal. So you need to go trample yourself some some crops, and you need to come over here to Saltwater Sam, and you need to buy, once you get 200 Glim, which shouldn't take you that long to accumulate, the basic fishing pole, which I have already done. And then you will add that to your collection, and you'll be then go get some more Glim, just like another 90 or so, and get uh, some lures. So let's go ahead and buy nine lures. I would recommend buying nine, not 90, not... So if you're low on Glim, don't trample until you get anything. Just, just get nine. And then you come over here to the water. Now, now the, the rare fish that drops the scales that you want, this is kind of separate from Glim, is called the Hub Hugger, Hewers, Hub Hub Hewers, Hub Huggers, something like that. And I don't know if that means that you can only find them in the Hub or not, but an awful, awful lot of people like to fish here. And I spent 90, I bought 90 lures, and I didn't catch a single one. Um, so if you get your magic find higher, you'll get it. And I also wonder if going, if fishing from the Hub is a requirement. Um, but I'm going to go ahead here and equip my fishing pole. And then I press F, which you guys who watch my videos regularly will have already seen this, a lot of this. And you just wait till the bobber dips and then you press F again. Now, uh, let me sh I'll show you why this is the best way to get Glim. You just spent Glim, so you'd think that this wouldn't be the best way to get Glim. And when I was making my fishing video, I was talking about how I wonder what they're, how slowly or how quickly you you run out of glim you know like if because if you deconstruct the fish you will get um glim back so i was like well how many how much glim does a lure cost how much glim do you get back and it's gambling basically because um you will not get your glim back nice uh nice building you got here on a common fish. So this is an, uh, like a common fish, you're only going to get a little bit of glim back. But this is an uncommon fish, so let's put that... Look, we got 50 glim back. So we spent... And we also got 10 flux, which is awesome. But let's go remind ourselves about how much we spent um, on the glim. Da, 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 da. Or uh, on, the, on the lures, rather. 90. So we've already made back more than half that in a single fish when using up a single lure. So the way the math actually works out, because I did some testing and it seems like there's like a 1 in 5, 1 in 4 chance of you getting an uncommon fish. So if the uncommon fish give you, you know, they give you about 5 times the glim, depending on the different uncommon fish give you different amounts of glim. But the, it comes out, uh, someone else in my comments was saying, I think it may have been Monstrant, was saying that you generally will get um, like one and a half to two times, I think it was. I don't have the comment up in front of me. Sorry if I'm misquoting that, but uh, the amount of glim that you put in. So that's why I'm curious if this is going to stick around much longer. I don't know if that was intended to be the way this is supposed to go. I, I mean, I kind of like it, but it is just like turning fish into more fish. Like There is no middleman step. It's just like you get turned fish into glim and glim into fish and fish into glim and glim into fish like all it takes well you know i guess it does kind of make sense now that i think about it because all it takes is a lot of time of sit standing here but um you know you definitely get a chance of getting other stuff like you saw i got some flux which of course is good for your weapons and stuff like that you get some other resources glacial shards fairy dust um 
And you also can get, let's do one more. Um, you also can get, like I said, the, the hub hu huggers or whatever that uh, will give you the ancient scales, which you can use to get sails and boats and stuff like that. So if you have the ability to get the fishing, oops, I pulled it too early. And that's actually one of the nice things that I thought that it wasted the, the, the thing. It does not. So here's two common fish it, that, that did not waste a lure when I pulled it too early. I don't know why I did that. My keyboard is, it's a new keyboard. I'm not used to it yet. Okay, deconstruct. Let's deconstruct both of these. There's 15 more glim. So one of those gave five and one of those gave 10. Um, so, you know, there's lots of ways to get glim and it is really good. Um, when you are out in an adventure world, other things you can use Glim for. You will find pirate ships that you can trade. They will have mounts. They will also have um, allies uh, so that you can trade for various pets. Like this little guy here, um, this this Cubesley cowboy, you can trade for those. You're going to need Glim for that. That's the best way to get all of those. Um, other things you can use Glim for. Whoop. Yeah, that's, that's about, that, that's the main stuff. So, Glim is a trading item. It is, um, I think, it, I think it should be, but it isn't the main trading item for items. Which, actually, actually you know what, no, that makes sense. Flux is the main trading, but between players. Between players, you trade with Flux. Between NPCs and the rest of the things in Trove, you use Glim. And that's because Flux is the one that can directly upgrade your fighting gear, and Glim is kind of irrelevant to that so I guess that does kind of make sense but um, but uh, yeah so so that that's basically it for glim I don't have a lot more to say to that um, I haven't tried lava fishing but there might be an even bigger return on that I'm not quite sure you can see the player next to me here uh, Ward Latrick uh, of Demacia it has a fire fishing rod, like a lava fishing rod, I forget the actual name for it, um, which would allow them, and also the draconic lure right there, which would allow for uh, fishing inside of lava. And they also have chocolate and plasma fishing planned to come. All of these might have different or higher or lower or something yields of glim, but it does look like, as the way things are right now, that fishing is meant to be something that can get you glim if you put in the time. So it's definitely worth it. I mean, I turned the... Um, I haven't gotten that much since then, so but I've gotten a little bit. But I turned the... Let's go ahead here. I turned the 900 glim investment into something around uh, 1600 glim, and I plan on doing that again. Um, but the reason why I said to buy the this this stack of nine is because chances are that you're going to get an uncommon fish in there, possibly two, and from my testing at least. And if that's true, then you'll probably be able to do this again. You'll probably be able to do this again. So grinding out the 900 glim for this is good because it'll save you the trips back to Saltwater Pete here. But uh, it's not necessary because you should get more than enough. Hey, someone's doing pinatas. I want in. <laughs> Come here. Hey, it's Monster Ant. I wonder if it's Monster Ant Pinatas. But the, yeah, so you should be able to get your investment back from the get go. Get him. Well, now this is un completely unrelated to Glim. I should probably get back to fishing.
Let's do. Let's get one more fish and see. I really want to catch this rare fish. There was a bug recently to getting infinite lures that I saw. Um, just recently, though, it was patched. So if you hear about that, it's too late. <laughs> so ignore that. But um, you know, it's all about all about. All about fishing, if you ask me these days. You want to get some mounts from trade the pirates for some mounts or for some boats or some sails? Fish, fish for it. School of fish, that's good, that's good. That's a rare one. Let's go back to this person's cornerstone. Not a rare one, actually, it's an uncommon one. Pardon me. So. We have common, two common, and common. One of you pointed out that control click lets you put them all in. I kind of wish it did that by default. I don't understand why you would ever want to only do one of something, but maybe you do. Uh, so this one will give you, you know, let's take that out. So let's do that. That's 21 right there. This one alone will give you 50 glim, which is, again, more than half the glim that I spent on just on all nine lures and uh, a blank scroll which is useful for for block recipes and that kind of a thing so yeah that was a perfect example so I think now that I'm looking here I think I already had some lures on me unless there is a bug where I'm getting lures back for some reason but uh, yeah I don't think I used more than nine lures there and I already made back more than that in the glim I think I only used like five lures right there and I made back yeah, hundred and at least a hundred and twenty glim, probably more like a hundred and thirty. And it only cost me ninety glim to get it. So how about that, huh? Uh, that is my recommended way to get glim now that fishing is a thing. I hope you guys have found this helpful, and I hope you guys now also understand why glim is an important resource because of how much of. I think we can expect to see more NPCs in the future and we should expect glim to be the chosen resource for trading um, and leave a comment if you want to do a guide on a particular resource um, I was thinking about mushing the ores all into one and sort of doing something like that but yeah if you if you have something that you want a a, a guide to be made of whoa that kinda hurts <laughs> Um, let me know, and I'll, and I'll make that do a resource guide about it. But ho this is hopefully, this is designed to be aimed towards newer. Tr Ow, Jesus Christ, that was a mistake. Should have never done that. <laughs> designed to be for newer trove players to get uh to get up and running. Thanks for watching, everybody. Really appreciate it. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video, which I hopefully will be able to talk about boats if I can finally get one of these rare fishies. See you next time.